As the year closes out, I've been continuously thinking about all the games I've played that received a review on this channel and those that didn't due to not fitting my show's format. Some of these games were fantastic and I've really wanted to share them with you. So what better way than a Game of the Year show? This is Retro Impressions and this is the year-end wrap-up covering my top games for 2017. <laughs> This list is broken into three categories. Retro Styled will cover games up through the sixth generation while also including any new titles that were done in the retro style. Modern games will cover any games newer than this. And finally, VR games. Any game that was considered for this list must be one I've played for a significant amount of time or beat this calendar year. I also want to note that I'm not going to list these games in any particular order. Let's get going. Classic and Retro Styled Games. Golf Story. I know what you're thinking. How can we listen to someone leading out their list with a golf game? Well, that's a fair point. However, this isn't your standard sports title. Have you ever played Game Dev Story and created a mashup sports RPG? I have, and this game is just about how I envisioned it should be. This is a 90s style RPG with the battle mechanic being focused around golf rather than swords and magic. For me, it brought the classic games World Court Tennis, Final Lap Twin, and Riding Hero to mind as I play through it. These are classic titles that also merge sports with traditional 16-bit RPG elements. I've been waiting a long time for a game to get this right, and Golf Story is that game. Colibri Imagine a game where you're a hummingbird that's been given supernatural powers with the task of saving the world. That sounds amazing, right? Well, thankfully, the folks at Nova Trade thought so too and brought this game to life. Although I wouldn't strictly refer to this as a shooter, it is without a doubt a shooter for people who don't like shooters. It paces itself incredibly well, is beautiful, and has an amazing soundtrack. It's filled with puzzles, exploratory elements, and side-scrolling action that ensures the player stays engaged until the credits roll. This, my friend, is therapy for gamers of all types. I am Setsuna. When I picked up my Nintendo Switch, I purchased every game released for it, including a copy of I am Setsuna I ordered from Japan. As someone who is passionate about retro games and games made in that style, I put this game in before anything else and I was hooked. Everyone was talking about Zelda and all I could think about was I Am Setsuna. I knew what I was signing up for when I started this game, but wow, does this feel like a remastered Super Nintendo RPG made for the PlayStation or Saturn. And that's exactly what the developer Tokyo RPG Factory was going for with combat that's a throwback to games such as Chrono Trigger. The unfortunate bit about this is it often draws unfair comparisons between the two games. This game has an absolutely gorgeous soundtrack, stunning visuals, fun combat, and a story good enough to keep you playing without boredom from start to finish, with an ending that's guaranteed to keep you reflecting back on this game for some time after you're done. Stellar Assault SS If you saw my series review for this game, then I'm sure it's no surprise to see this make an appearance. With Stellar Assault, we're not just talking a good game, but one of the best Saturn and quite arguably the best space combat sim of its console generation. This game was incredibly forward-thinking in just about every department of gameplay and design. I mean, they even included widescreen support. This game isn't really on anyone's radar, and it's kind of a shame that it's not getting the attention it deserves. The only downside to recommending this game is that it's a Japanese-only Saturn exclusive, and it's extremely hard to find. I'm not going to dive deep into why you should play this, as I already have nearly a 20-minute video discussing this series. The most important takeaway is if you enjoy space combat simulators that are top-notch, this is one you absolutely shouldn't miss. Sonic Mania I was a huge Sonic fan growing up, owning every game released through Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast. I really disliked the direction the series took when it hit the Dreamcast and vowed to stop supporting it until it stepped back to its roots. 19 years later and we finally got that game and my first Sonic game purchased since the Dreamcast release. There's a ton to say about this game, but I'll keep it short. For every Sonic fan out there that's like me and couldn't get into the odd RPG mashup that Sonic became. This is the game for you. This here is straight up retro platforming, track running, spring bouncing fun that does justice to the fans 
while paying homage to its roots. It's also backed by one fantastic soundtrack. Modern Games Horizon Zero Dawn Story time. I actually pre-ordered this game and forgot all about it. When it arrived via an Amazon box at my door, my son asked if he could open it and see what the game was. Lo and behold, it was Horizon Zero Dawn and he wanted to play it. Well, I told him, let me pop it in really quick and make sure it's appropriate before handing you over the controller. This was on a Tuesday. By 3 a.m. Friday morning, I was up against the clock trying to beat the game before leaving on a business trip at 4.30 the same morning, something I was thankfully able to accomplish. I try not to look too deep in the games before they come out because I never want the joy of discovery to be ruined. For this game, that joy was the bliss of discovering the world Guerrilla Games had built. I was enthralled by the story, captivated by the gameplay, and delighted by the pacing. This is an open world game that feels alive and well populated, helping to make Horizon Zero Dawn a true tour de force. What remains of Edith Fitch? I'm going to be quite frank with you and say most of you should just skip this game. If this was a game that I was recommending to the mass public, it actually wouldn't be here. That isn't the case here though, as this is my personal favorite games of 2017. So let's talk about the game for a moment before moving on. This is a walking simulator with a great story and puzzle elements. You play as Edith Finch, a young girl who returns to her family's estate as the lone heir. Many generations lived in the house, and as people passed away, their rooms, along with their possessions, were sealed away. The journey is about discovering your past via the exploration of the house. The story that unfolded kept me glued to this game until it was finished. It's fairly short, requiring a leisurely weekend at most to see it all. Heavy Rain HD I was chatting with some friends when this game came up. I had heard of it, but never picked it up when it released on the PS3 in 2010. Imagine my surprise to find an HD remake was released for the PS4, with a physical copy only being released in Europe. So let's have a look. Picture taken the interrogation bits from LA Noir, the choose your own adventure sections from any Telltale game, and the choices matter formula from the Mass Effect series. Combine those into one cohesive system, then move the formula up from middle school to high school, and that's the system the game works with. I don't want to say much about the story because the less you know going in, the better the experience will be. Here's what you need to know though. This is a mystery game based on numerous characters that you control. Every action and misstep has a consequence that can result in 18 different endings. Characters can die, altering the whole course of the game. It's incredible how well this game is held up visually as it's hard to think of even a handful of games released this year that look better. Mario Odyssey well, I'm sure this game isn't a surprise. I've essentially enjoyed every real Mario game release since the original. I'm not talking about those CDI games, come on. I'm talking the legit Mario games from Nintendo. For me, Mario Sunshine has been at the top of the 3D releases. That was until I played Odyssey. You know, it's a real shame that Nintendo was willing to wait seven years between proper Mario games to ensure its fan base nothing but the best. While Sega treats its fans like literal dumpsters producing Sonic shovelware year after year, destroying the franchise in the process. So anyway, why is Odyssey on this list? It's fun, it's innovative, and man is it nostalgic. The seamless transition between 3D world and 2D side-scrolling 8-bit vintage design will make you smile. The incredible attention to detail from top to bottom made me feel giddy with joy as I played through it in anticipation of what creative design I would see next. Of all the games on this list, this one has the widest appeal, guaranteeing just about anyone who picks up the controller is going to enjoy their time spent. Virtual Reality There were a lot of amazing VR experiences this year, but I'm only going to recommend one. Super Hot VR When I first heard Super Hot Team was making a VR version of Super Hot, I expected it to be the best VR experience around, and having played it, I wasn't disappointed. Superhot was easily in my top games list last year, and the transition to VR is, well, it's masterful. 
The series is set in a VR world and is what I consider a action puzzle game. The premise is pretty simple. There are a lot of programs that want you dead and you need to kill them before they kill you. This game is very much like jumping into the matrix as it relies on a system where time only moves when you move. This might sound easy as you can just stop and think about the next step for as long as needed. However, there are so many enemies come and get you from so many directions, it becomes quite challenging rather quickly. You have full control over your whole body while under the hood, giving an incredible sense of immersion. Grabbing items with your left or right hand, ducking a punch, or dodging bullets will soon become second nature. This isn't really the game I would recommend you introduce Grandma Betty to. If you're looking for a game for her, I recommend you put her under the hood with Shark Attack and leave this one for the friends that always dreamed of becoming part of the game. In the end, there were a ton of games that released in 2017 that I played but couldn't get pulled into and a couple that I'm dying to play that required time commitments I'm unable to make. I hope you've enjoyed this video and this list has given you games to consider playing in the future. Let me know in the comments what your favorite games of 2017 were and if you've had a chance to play any of the games that I've mentioned in the video. Special thanks to Rum for lending voice support. If you enjoy crazy, chaotic, and funny videos, then I recommend you check out his channel via the link I left in the description. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a positive or negative comment letting me know your thoughts. Click subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. If you're interested in staying updated on upcoming projects and channel news, follow me on Twitter. Until next time, I'm Genovi and this has been Retro Impressions and Reviews.